today is exciting. I got this in the mail from my friends at Wet Paint. Please note, this is Steve Mitchell from the Mind of Watercolor. Good friend of mine, has been for a long time. And today we're gonna call Steve up. This was just released. We're gonna call Steve up, get him on the line, ask him a few questions about this. Have a little chat. There's Steve Mitchell uh, from the Mind of Watercolor right there, live. We're gonna talk about this. Whoa. All right, this is Steve Mitchell. This is my longtime friend and art partner, partner in art, as we like to say. Steve, thanks for thanks for taking time to take my call. I have lots of questions for you. Oh, my pleasure. No problem. All right, well, Steve, I've got uh, in my hands uh, this Steve Mitchell mixing palette. You can still see it's in shrink wrap. I'm gonna I'm gonna un, I'm gonna unwrap this today and do a little video of the various colors. I saw your video, uh, your debut, your debut yesterday. How excited are you about this? How psyched are you? Well, it was really fun. I I, I mean I have to admit it was really fun. Uh, you know, uh, it was very little work on my part. So most of it was all. Uh, all Darren and, and of course your idea, but I, all I had to do was pick some colors, and that was fun and easy. What goes into that? I mean, apart from just you know you had to negotiate colors. What what? I mean, I know you you're not making money on it. You made that clear. It's just uh, it's it's a real special honor to just have your name on a palette, you know. So and pick the colors. But anyway, what went into that? Yeah, for me it was just uh, looking over. The colors I most often use, uh, my go-to colors, and trying to translate that to Daniel Smith. Now, uh, in a lot of ways, the delays that we had for the, the, this couple years had a lot of uh, silver linings. Number one, we didn't have to put these paints in that crappy little plastic palette we right. started out with. We got we got to wait until they had this really nice. Uh, metal tin. The second was, uh, I, uh, if we'd have done this two years ago, I was very unfamiliar with Daniel Smith. I was just, so I had just started collecting and, and getting a little more familiar, been able to try more of their paints. I now have, I guess, a collection of them, different mm -hmm. ones I've tried. So, yeah. Uh, my favorite, usually go to palette, as you know, is M. Graham. Mm -hmm. And so I've translated a lot of those, those colors that were my most often used colors, the ones that were my favorites for uh, mixing all the time, um, especially when it's uh, pared down to 12 colors. And, uh, you know, Darren gave me a list of what they were going to be able to produce in a pan, and I just went through and and tried. I had all of the Daniel Smith dot cards, so I went through and I, I sampled them all out and actual swatches. I uh, even did a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, kind of play mixing. And uh, those were the 12 that I landed on. So, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those palettes. I, I wanted to make it all purpose. Uh, I'm mixing palette. It's called a mixing palette for a reason. And that's because it's not geared, you know, it, it's powerful and being able to produce what you need for just about any subject. It works great for portraits. Uh, it works for florals. It's great for landscape. It's mm -hmm. probably its biggest strength. So uh, it's just, it's a in my view, it's a powerful yeah. mixing palette. Um, uh, you know, and that was it. That's that's where I landed. And I, I went over that selection. I had, We had time, right? So yeah. I was able to go over that selection several times and and say, would I rather do this? Would I rather do that? No, I'm, I'm good with it. Video <laughs> in the debut video yesterday, you were talking about uh, Moon Glow and that color, yeah. and it's kind of a purplish Payne's Gray. And you said, yeah. but that's okay because I can mix a Payne's Gray with two of these, two of the colors that are comp, you know, that are that that come yeah. in this palette, and. Yeah. And and I, I need to try that because I've you know believe it or not I've never tried that I I just always buy the Payne's gray in the tube you know right well uh, I don't know if you're familiar with what they call James gray no uh, but that Jane Blundell who's uh, a well known watercolorist mm -hmm. and have, Daniel Smith produces a palette with her name on it uh, called the Ultimate Mixing Palette 
and they also have a tube with uh, Jane's Gray in it. Um, Jane's Gray is burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, basically those two pigments. So you can do a similar thing with my palette in the red transparent red oxide and the um, ultramarine blue. Okay. Um, but what I really like about Moon Glow is that it it granulates well, but it has a leaning cast to it, and uh, that was so similar to M. Graham's neutral tint. Mm. M. Graham's neutral tint has a slight violet cast to it. And I always loved that because uh, rather than a lot, a lot of neutral tints are just fairly dead and bland. Yeah, but I like that extra little bit of life that it has. The moon glow reminded me so much of that. Uh, it has a little more violet cast, but that that really works with every color. And I notice you you stuck a quin gold in there. I know you love that quinacridone gold color. And, and the first time I saw you use that in a painting, I can't. It might be four years ago now, four or five years. Ago. It's been a long time. The first time I th I, I think I saw you use that in a painting, I thought to myself. That is one of the greatest colors ever invented. Yeah, I mean the way you the way you map that thing out from its dark gold colors all the way to its, you know, its its lighter yellowish tones. Uh, that's a, that's an amazing color. Yeah, it it is. It it has that deep jewel tone uh, aspect to it. Um, it's it's like a it fills a role similar to a yellow ochre, but it's a lot more vibrant and intense um, in terms of like mixing earth tones and stuff. But yeah, the, that was the first time I tinted that out. It, tint is so strong mm -hmm. that you can uh, tint it out with a lot of water and still have a pretty strong yeah. tint. And it's very just yellow. It's like almost uh, Indian yellow or uh, I don't know, know what else to compare it to. But, uh, get you more in there you go. Almost a boat. Yeah, but um, apart from the Quinn Gold, which I which I saw you use, which is amazing, what what went into the the choice of the colors? What what was in your mind when you were thinking of and and what trouble did you have narrowing down, narrowing down colors? Because it's only twelve, and that's that's not very many colors when you think about it. I think for me, it's probably. Uh, it's a it's a comparison to what I, mo I use the most. Um, and I have several palettes, uh, not just my go-to colors on M. Graham, but, uh, you know, I have some Elie palettes, some great Schmincke palettes. I've got, uh, you know, Core, uh, Mission Goal, uh, all those. And just looking at those and, and thinking what ones I use the most, but it was also uh, because there was not a lot to draw from. They don't. They didn't have the entire Daniel Smith range available to make these pans. So, uh, uh, so how many did they have? Process, Steve? Yeah, it's a process of elimination. Yeah, how many and did they have, have though? So I think it was uh, initially thirty-six. And maybe they've got more they can okay. draw from now. But the okay. list that Dero sent me was thirty-six. So not what, what's on the dot card for sure. Right, they have the full range. I right. think there were some technical problems with mm. the pouring. Yeah, because they're hand poured. Yeah, they're hand poured, mm. and they actually have to pour them in three layers and let each layer dry. So it's, it's labor intensive. Wow. Okay. And, yeah, and I guess maybe uh, I'm trying to imagine what that manufacturing process is like, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, so. I guess maybe some colors work better than others, and I know that some Daniel Smith colors get hard and probably chip, maybe crack out, so they probably couldn't do all any or all of them. Mm -hmm. That, In fact, uh, I had a couple choices that uh, Darren later came back and said, no, they've eliminated that from the choices. So Ooh, Okay, what were, what were those? Do you remember? One of them was cobalt blue. I, I originally was going to go with cobalt blue okay. rather than ultramarine. But um, that was, uh, initially we were talking about a nine color palette. Right. Yeah. So I did not have a phthalo blue in there. So I wanted a sort of a middle blue rather than splitting that primary into a warm mm -hmm. and cool. But 
he said we could do 12, so Ultramarine actually turned out to be a better choice anyway. Was that uh, nine? Oh, sure. Was that nine color palette due to the old, uh, the, the old case that they were using, that plastic one? I think one? so. I uh, think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank goodness this, this metal case came along because this is a big win for Daniel oh, yeah. Smith. Oh, yeah. This is the proper home for really good quality paints. It's, it's, a, nice, it's a nice case, isn't it? It, it is. a nice metal, metal palette. It's beautiful. Dirty and, you know, yeah. love having their, their logo on there. Oh, so, yeah. yeah great. Another beautiful thing about this case is the background painting on it. Oh, yeah. That's pretty special. I'm wondering, uh, Steve, by uh, production of this video, if you wouldn't send me a snapshot of that background painting, if you still have it, uh, sure. And I'll and I'll post it alongside this so people can see the whole painting in its glory. And I don't want to steal any of your thunder if you plan to do that, but I sure yeah. would like to show it. Yeah, that yeah. was a recent video before uh, this this um, introduction of this palette, and I thought uh, that was the, one of the most colorful ones. So. Um, Absolutely. It was, it was uh, you know, I thought a logical choice. So, I'd, yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you, yeah. sir. I, I'm reading the back of this thing, and it says, uh, you know, Steve Mitchell, Mitchell uh, having worked in watercolor for over 40 years, and I'm thinking to myself, you, you're you not that. What, did you start when you were six? <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll refrain from doing a whole lot of math here. <laughs> let, let's just say it's accurate it's accurate and it, it says that you've been a professional graphic designer and illustrator serving the business clientele in and around upstate south carolina for over 30 years and yeah. you and you had you had built your own business your own successful graphic design firm you you know you were in the commercial art world and right. then you transitioned i think you you said i'm going to hang this all up and become my own business guy and start my YouTube channel. What was that, about five or six years ago? How long has it been, Steve? Five years. Uh, well, next month it'll be six years. End of next month. And and I think we've known each other for five years and 11 months of that. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> we, we, I met right after you started your channel. I think you had, I remember at one time looking at your channel subscribers and you had 720 uh, subscribers on your channel. And, oh, yeah. and how many do you have now, Steve? Uh, just past 235,000. That's unbelievable. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was so happy to know you and meet you when you were starting out. And, you know, I mean, uh, fortuitous, there was only a few of us back then really doing, like, hardcore art supply reviews. And maybe, you know, you had Lindsay was a crafter. Lindsay Weirich, who you know well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from the Frugal Crafter channel, she was on. There was a few of us. Well, I mean, you know, that's that's what inspired me to get going about your channel. So, you know, it's like, hey, if this guy can can do some of this stuff, why not? You know, give it a try. <laughs> well, it's pretty nice of you to say. I'm going to go ahead and cut over to some work with this palette and then give you a, a look at the colors. That'll be fun. We'll get back to my conversation with Steve in a few minutes, but first I want to take a look at the palette itself, the paints, the, the tin, and then test out the colors here. So the first thing you're going to notice uh, is this is a vast upgrade from the plastic palette that Daniel Smith released last year. So this tin palette is well-constructed, well-made. You can see there it comes with a swatch card. Um, it, when you look at these paints, you can tell right away that they're not uniform, and that's because they're, they're hand-poured in three different layers. And I think Daniel Smith just wanted to make sure that there was no cracking or splitting of the paints once they got in the pan. So that's really nice. You can see the solid construction of this tin. It's substantial. It's, it's going to be well-made, and you are going to get years and years of use out of this very, very nice tin. You can see as I begin to lay the colors down how uh, how vibrant they are. And this is a French mold-made watercolor paper in a cold press. 
and it's nice and toothy and it's a really good paper to exercise the paint on to to get a feel for how this paint is going to behave um, this set that features 12 colors in the half bands as you saw there's a green appetite genuine a quinacridone gold which you're seeing here a trans red iron oxide a quinacridone rose a moon glow a hansa yellow medium a pyrrole scarlet a thalo green with blue shade a thalo blue with green shade a raw umber and a rose ultraviolet and i think that that, that mainly what steve uh, said about this being a mixing palette and what it says on on the advertisement for this is absolutely correct you can make an astonishingly large amount of colors from from the colors contained in this palette and that's i think that's why you you get a guy like steve mitchell to uh to to, to create a palette like this with with daniel smith because you're getting years of experience from this guy and um and you're benefiting from it here i'm doing a little mixing of the colors just as i just mentioned i'm going to use that i think it's the pyrrole red with a uh i'm, I'm, I'm going to use a thalo blue here and that's what i'm getting this purple color from this violet and which is very nice uh it's a it's a little bit you could say a little bit like a um like almost like the moon glow color in here. It's, it, it, it might be good for a warm, warm shading or just a really cool uh, violet. Uh, really, not I don't mean cool as in temperature cool, but cool looking violet color. You can see it's like it's like a little kid spilled grape juice on this paper. It's really nice. It's it's a juicy paint, as they say, and and it's easy uh, easy to uh, see how you could use that in your palette. And, you know, Steve mentioned this is good for landscapes uh, as well as portraiture and other applications. Here's a close-up look. And now back to more with Steve Mitchell from The Mind of Watercolor. I, I, some of the questions I know are going to come up is like, what kind of brush would you pair with this? I know, I know it's going to depend on the painting, but you're doing, but tell me what kind of, what kind of paper sketchbook brush what would you pair with the, this palette oh you know um any kind really i you know i love cotton paper so mm -hmm. and i'm a big artist fan in terms of sketchbooks uh i it's kind of hard to pick i've been trying and testing so many mm -hmm. um so it, same goes with the brushes. My favorite always been silver brush black velvet. They're they're very soft, so you know that's not always uh, the best only choice. Uh, lately, been painting a lot with Princeton uh, Elites and um, let's see, Escoda Prados. Those are both great brushes. Uh, what what are your top three or four sketchbooks right now that you that you like to practice in? Well, um, probably the perfect sketchbook um, tops them all. I've, I've been working a lot lately in Kilimanjaro, um, which is uh, Cheap Joe's. That, uh, they make two or three different kinds. And um, got my grandson's over here. Uh, so, uh, let's say... Strathmore has just come out with some. I can't really say they're a favorite, but at least they're they're doing cotton sketchbooks now. They are cotton. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, they have the, the ones that are non-cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, the bead has gotten hard to find for some reason. Um, let's think. Let me think. Um, have you been using any Stillman and Burn? Uh, I don't very much anymore, okay. uh, at least not for watercolor. I, I use them a lot for pen and ink or ink and wash. Sure. sure. Um, they don't have a cotton one. Yeah, they don't. No. So, so they were recently purchased by Claire Fontaine, right? So they maybe they'll introduce one. Yeah, maybe they will. Mm -hmm. They should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so my go-to is usually the perfect sketchbook. And you know there's a couple of different generations of that. Yeah, you sent me over a, a nice uh, pack of uh, sketchbooks. And I, uh, I've used them, and I like them. And, uh, yeah, I think I sent you one of the original. You did. I haven't touched that one yet because it's an original. But I, I had asked, uh, I'd asked Darren to, to look into them, and he stocked a few of them, and um, and he, I think his his primary concern was he doesn't know where the paper's produced, and mm -hmm. and they and they're not too uh, they're not too uh, transparent about where the paper comes from, but yeah. but I'd like to know if it's a Chinese mill, that's fine. If they're still doing good work on a quality Fordrenier, you know, and they got a good recipe, I don't really care who makes it. But, mm -hmm. but I think he's interested, you know, from that standpoint of it, you know, all the other sketchbook sure. companies kind of tell you where their mills are, whether it's Great sure. Britain or France or Italy. Yep. Yeah. What's what's the utility in a palette like this, just in general, um, Steve? My, my biggest advice is always uh, get to know your palette really well. Um, get to be able to paint uh, almost intuitively without thinking you know mixing um drawing from this color that color um and the only way to do that is to play to play uh i talk about a thing in videos quite a bit and in my class is called a trip around the palette uh it's just a more informal way of doing uh these mixing chart matrices which uh, some people are good at that. I don't do them. I just don't have the patience for them. Sure. I, they're beneficial. I don't mean to say that they're not, but I, I do a thing where I call a trip around the palette where I just take every color, just put it out there, you know, make washes, bring in all the other colors, either every other color or all the other colors that I want to try with it mm -hmm. and just start seeing what happens. You know, and the only way that these mixing uh, ideas uh, become ingrained and you, you just go to certain colors and do mixes, uh, the only way that becomes ingrained is that you just do it a lot. Just do it, yeah. yeah just... You don't have to paint something. <laughs> you just get the paint out and play with it. Right. And, you know, just do pages of it. And it, it you know, you got to waste some watercolor paper, which... I'm, I'm sad to say a lot of people don't want to do, but you have to. If you want to become really well-versed, not just in how to paint, but in color, use of color, you, you got to burn some paper. Yeah, what are you saving it for? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Might as well use it. Yeah, good. Well, that's good. It's good to hear from me. It's good to see your face. And I really enjoyed the, the debut video yesterday for this palette. This is a wonderful palette in a very high quality tin um, you know this thing is going to be uh, a good uh, palette to carry in your kit with you when you go outside and field sketch or even in the studio and um, Steve I know they're sold out right now but Darren's trying to get some back in stock and as soon as he does I'm sure there'll be another announcement you no know, we we talk all the time and you never know where the world is going to connect yeah. you, right? You never, right. you never know how you know, things are going to work. Yeah. I want to, and I want to say something about that because when I started my channel, I thought it would be great. I followed some other channels, some other genres that were totally out of art. Like I was a little bit into woodworking. I, I don't have time for that anymore. But one thing I noticed about some of those channels, uh, woodworking was one of them. There was a lot of community yes. a lot of camaraderie among a lot of those channels um they supported each other they interacted a lot i didn't see that a lot in art channels uh, artists are very keep to themselves mm -hmm. um and so i was looking for people who were a little more willing to uh be uh part of a community who are willing to contribute and that just means interacting you know yeah. i go to your channel and comment and you go to my channel and comment Always. and we support everybody we mm -hmm. we promote everybody uh, we promote uh you know it could be watercolor could be uh park in general uh, mm -hmm. and i 
I, I will confess to a, a certain amount of disappointment as uh, I've, I've commented on a lot of channels and they just don't reciprocate. Mm-hmm. Fine. You know, they don't want... Uh, but the ones that have, and I would say you top that list, uh, <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay Wyrick, you know, uh, Denise Soden, mm-hmm. uh, those have been great, I think, uh, community contributors, and in my mind, as such, leader, community leaders oh, in watercolor uh, and art painting areas. Mm. So um, that's that's sort of, uh, for what it's worth, uh, kind of a plea. But I think it's great uh, to, to do that. And I appreciate that you, you know, kind of played into that, played along with that, um, that whole thrust, that whole idea. You know, this is amazing. This is a recognition of your work. They don't do this for everybody. They don't. They do not do this for everybody. You know, some of the greats, Marilyn Garber. Uh, yeah. She's just a fantastic botanical artist. You met, or you 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 talked about Jane Blundell and a few mm-hmm. others. And and Schminka mm-hmm. has honored people with these kinds of things before in the past. But Daniel Smith, to my knowledge, I don't know. You're like what the first one with this. Uh, I don't know. I, I think you maybe. are. I maybe. think you might be. Yeah. Well, so that's a real special honor, and I I'm, I couldn't be prouder for you and happier for you, Steve. Makes me thank happy. You. Well, thank you. That's, that <laughs> means a lot. How's lockdown treating you, uh, Steve? That's all right. Uh, South Carolina has, has uh, they loosened up. Uh, you know, not no total reopenings, but uh, just they loosened up some restrictions a couple weeks ago, and then they've gone yet another uh, increment into that this week. So uh, still a lot of things closed. Um, I mean, getting out and about doesn't bother me. I just, I'm careful, okay. as everybody should be. I think as long as everybody's careful, we're good. Okay, you're doing your social distancing and all that yeah. stuff? I'm, I'm trying. Good. I, I need you to stay healthy because uh, I got you at least, I have you down for 20 more years of YouTube videos. <laughs> we'll see. It won't take you that long to pass a million subscribers, which I I, I predict in, it, it'll happen in the next few years. <laughs> I'm not counting on a million. <laughs> and at this point, you know, I'm having fun. I don't care. It, you know, it gets to a point where the number doesn't matter anymore. So right. I try to keep my weekly schedule of videos up. I feel like that's very important. Um, that's gotten me where I am so far. And second to that is, is patrons, uh, their priorities. So I try to um, prioritize the comments and the interaction with them. So any other time is left over. And uh, I just, I, I, it, when I get back to doing online teaching, it'll probably be still shared. Sure. Uh, you mentioned woodworking a little while ago, and two thoughts popped into mind. One was our friend Val, who does uh, pyrography and wood burning. She's really great at that, and uh, fun to go see her channel and 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 her work. But it also reminded me that I I have a limited edition Steve Mitchell wooden dip pen that was hand turned on a lathe by yeah. Mr. Mitchell, and I I appreciate that and I use it so. Yeah, it's, it's a good it's good quality work, Steve. Oh, thanks. So, so I, I, I haven't really done any more. <laughs> from the workshop of Steve Mitchell, which is yeah. makes me happy. Well, thanks, Steve. It's been great catching up. And Thank you, uh, my thanks, buddy. God bless you. All right, you too. See you soon. Bye. Well, that was Steve Mitchell, Mind of Watercolor. And now we'll do a sketch with several of the colors from Steve's wonderful palette.